All right, time for a quick video. It's just a filler video. Um, but, uh, well, I did find, I did find, oh, I've gone and lost it, haven't I? As soon as I say I've found it, I've lost it. Uh, the other controller that works. Oh, it's right here. So at the end of this video, we are gonna test it out and I'm gonna make a few more comments about the Mega Drive tester because there's something obvious that I completely missed from the previous thing. Um, but anyway, I've got this thing. It's a Silver Star 64 built-in games little gaming console from many years ago. I think it's from, I actually dropped it on the floor and now it makes a little rattling sound. Uh, not so good. Um, I'm gonna have to break the seal, aren't I? Uh, this is uh, a, Atari, I believe it's an Atari 2600 um, or VCS game machine clone, uh, possibly sold mainly in New Zealand from from what I've seen. Well, I haven't seen much of it on the internet, uh, and no no taking it apart to see what's inside. Since you can hear it rattling, so I did drop it. Um, but the thing is, it's got you know uh, RF output and. Oh, that's probably the bit there. I dropped it and I broke a bit of plastic. So this is not going to be the collector's item that I was hoping it to be. Um, but I thought maybe I'll take it apart and just see what it looks like and maybe kind of guess at building a composite mod for it. And I'll probably just base that on the other composite mods that are for the 2600. Uh, I was supposed to print off um, a diagram of the important uh, IC on the inside, but I forgot to do that. And I may not, I just thought because I'm just going to randomly do this right now. So hopefully we'll just take it apart. I don't even know if I have the right kind of screwdriver. <laughs> I'm going to have to make, that's not going to work. Don't want to strip the screws. That's not going to work. I might not be able to do it simply because I just smash things around a lot. Um, but because I don't have an appropriate screwdriver. Now these are all too big. That's, that's too big. This is too small. <laughs> Well, this is well thought out. Um, hold on. Where did I put? Um, where is it? Where is it? Uh, well, we'll have to make do with what we've got. That's what I always say. And. I'm not going to restart this. I'm sorry, I'm just not going to. So we've got this screwdriver and this screwdriver. Uh, we must have some other screwdrivers on this disc somewhere. And we have this one, which is what we want. All right, here we go. This is about the right size. Probably not, but it's going to work. It works fine. There we go. All right. <laughs> you can't say that I'm not prepared for these videos um, because I won't be able to hear you, so there's no point doing it. Uh, right. And that screw, and that screw. I really should have one of those like fancy little electric screw thing, screwdriver things. And um, that's not a power drill, <laughs> so it's not really doesn't really count. Uh, what video did I watch today where someone made a very good point about how to use an electric um, drill to um, screw things in uh, and not strip the threads? <laughs> not that I think I've ever done that, but. I think I've mainly only used a power drill to drill screws into wood. So I don't know, even know what the term is for that. Uh, right, which reminds me, I did get a, I, I, did get, I finally got a scroll saw recently. Oh, I've broken quite a few bits, haven't I? <laughs> Gosh, I could not possibly have broken this much. Uh, you didn't, what's the point of this? You don't, there isn't even a screw there. They're just, they're, that's just a pretend, like you think, oh my goodness, that's going to require me to break that so that um, they'll know that I've broken it and that my warranty will be void but no you don't even have to touch that so that's nice so uh, out of these holes I've broken three of them uh, which is impressive <laughs> uh, well you've got to have a hobby I guess um, so those are <laughs> not so useful and it's a bit dusty I wish I had a little thing to, to, to dust it down with but I don't Ah, oh, but I do, but it's not right here, so we won't worry about that. Dust is fine. Um, I'm sure I'm aesthetically, like, fine. Um, and then it just comes off, and that's all there is to it. It's like the simplest thing. So we can see that there's some problems. So this is probably why this switch, that bit of plastic comes off. And look at that, it's even socketed. So that's a 6591. 
which is possibly that riot chip. This does not look the way that I, well that's interesting, it says king there, the way that I was anticipating it to look. Um, so the thing that always interests me is that there were clones of the Atari 2600 or VCS because they were apparently all off the shelf pieces, but there's this TIA chip um, which is like an Atari chip, so I didn't understand why. But I guess they were, I was supposed to look up, maybe they sold it for some other alternative purposes, and then you could buy them separately and then make your own one. But the other one is a Riot, this Riot chip, maybe that's what this one is, the 6591. Because it should be in the other one, maybe this is like a combined version. There's a 6507, which is a simplified version of a 6502. And then there's this other thing with this Riot chip, which is RAM and IO and a timer and has 128 bytes of RAM. And I actually bought a bunch of them off AliExpress. Whether or not they're real, I do not know. Um, but I thought it'd be funny to try. So these, what are these two things? These must be the ROMs. So this this basically must be everything in here. So this is really a 2600 clone. When did this thing even come out? I have no idea. I don't think it, well, it's obviously like, it looks like it comes from the 80s. Like it's all it's all surface mount, not surface mount. It's all, it's all through hole and it's only one side of the board um, and it's got some what are these ICs uh, we've got our old friend the 4069 inverter chip and then we've got a what's this 4520 which I can't remember what that is off the top of my head but it sounds kind of uh, familiar uh, 14520 but like it's in the same range as that um, as the um, LED controller Eight, seven seven segment LED control. So I'm assuming these two here are the RAMs that hold all their all the games. So this is not so useful because I was kind of hoping uh, that I could just work out well, it was going to have a TIA chip in it, and then I could work out from that which pins were the ones that connect to the um, that I'm going to have to to um, hook into to make the composite output. But then again, I can guess I can look at these bits here. So something must be coming out of it. But it's going to require a bit more work, I suppose, to work out um, where actually the video signal is coming out of that. Uh, well, I guess not. Like, you can kind of identify that these are all the RAM ones, just looking at the bottom of it. Uh, so this is where the RF circuit stuff must be. Um, think is a reasonably good guess. Um, I can't honestly tell. I'm going to have to do this thing where I take a photo of this. So I am going to come back uh, and do what I said I was going to do, which is take this apart and reverse engineer it and build one um, uh, from on a breadboard and then just see if I can make it sound exactly the same as this thing. Uh, if you remember from the last time, actually this got a segue into the last thing I was going to say about this, so I'm going to put this back in a, t together. Uh, it looks okay, doesn't it? Like, it's a bit of a strange soldering job over there. Um, I don't know what's really happened over there. And that, that little that little thing is a bit loose. You can probably tighten that up. Not that I think it's going to make too much difference. So that was probably, you would guess, this is a voltage regulator or something. Um, it's going to be a bit hard to actually... Screw it, it's not going to work, is it? I'm going to have to use my finger. Alright, hold on. Well, if I was all, if there was any static problems, it's definitely how I'm blowing something up now. Um, so this is the annoying power thing, but that's fine. Maybe I can, the one thing I can do from now is actually work out which, well, look at that, that looks dirty, doesn't it? That looks super dirty in there. Um, where's my... I don't have, oh I do have, what am I talking about? Well, I thought I had them. Uh, they were just here and now they've gone. Uh, they haven't gone, I just don't know where they actually are. Cotton buds was what I'm thinking of, or what do the people call them in the oak Q-tips or something? Um, but, I thought I could use this to disinfect um, surfaces if the COVID-19 becomes a problem. Not that I'm particularly concerned about that for my own particular health, uh, as I don't think anyone uh, most of the world should be. 
but you probably should be concerned about the economic uh, the economic costs that this is going to incur. But enough of politics. Um, actually, that looks a lot cleaner without me having to do much at all. Amazing. <laughs> um, anyway, I can actually work out what is so. Well, that's pretty much the obvious thing. Uh, where did I put my? Like, oh wait, literally, it's underneath all this. Okay, so the one thing I just have to do is, if I'm going to plug it in with the RF output, is I have to work out uh, which part of this thing is the center, is, is the ground, and which one's the supply. And let's just have a quick go with this thing. So we can pretty much guess that this is the ground. <laughs> so this thing here is the ground pin because um, it's the big connected ground ground plane at the bottom which is the outside so the outside is ground there's a reasonably good bet is there anything to protect it if you put it in the wrong way uh, yes that's a 5 volt voltage regulator so that's nice um, so it probably takes 6 volts or something on the bottom what does it say on the bottom it doesn't say where's the bottom gone it doesn't say anywhere what voltage it takes but I think we can put in about 7 volts and we'll be fine. Um, but if I plug it in the wrong way, look at that, it's got like an inductor symbol under it and that's, that maybe that is an inductor. That's weird. Uh, it isn't actually a diode. Huh. Really? I've never seen one like that. So I'll bring it up close. Uh, <laughs> you can't, I can't get it to look right that that little component there is marked as an inductor uh, maybe it's called a choke in this situation I don't know um, well this is gonna be fun so I can plug it in now and turn it on and see if it actually does work and so have a look around at any other things you want to see on this <laughs> before I put it away there's a whole bunch of interesting things here what does this do what does this do it's probably most of this is just for the RF output um, which is like well I don't want that nobody wants that <laughs> Uh, but I guess I can just look this up on the online. It's like six five nine one. That sounds like a very standard IC. So there must, it must, it must, it must be the, it must be the IC. They must. This is probably what they used in the in the later model twenty six hundreds. Those small versions. This is all on one chips. Maybe I don't know. I've never actually heard of that. Um, but uh, it will be interesting. So there's the little crystal, and there's not much else to say about anything on this. There's another one of those little inductors. Hmm. What are they for? Right. So, thanks for watching. Oh, wait. One last thing. So, what I was going to say is, this thing here uses, um, I think it used uh, a 4069, wasn't it? There was a 4069 inverter chip to make an oscillator. Or some, it was some chip like that. It was either that or a... Uh, it wasn't a 555 timer to make, an, to make the square wave oscillation for the little tones that this, thing's make, this thing makes. Uh, so it was either a 4049 or a 4069 or something. Uh, and because you can make oscillators out of that, but you can also make oscillators out of uh, other similar things like um, 404, 4001s. So, oh, this is a terrible way of doing it. Move this out of the way for a second. Um, so on here, uh, I was saying, if you remember from yesterday, um, that... Where is it? Where did I put it? It was literally just here. Um, it is literally just here. Uh, that I haven't actually used a, the the five 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 timer bit. So I was using a five 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 timer to create the clock for the system. Um, but I've got a four zero zero one, which only one of the four zero zero one NOR gates am I actually using. So I've got three left over that aren't being used for anything, and I only need two to make myself a high-speed oscillator. Um, and so I can I don't need a, I don't even need another five I don't need a five five five. I can just use um, two more parts of my NOR gate, two more NOR gates, and I've got one left over which I might have to use to buffer things. Um, and voila, it's it's all done. So. <laughs> I'm going to do that, and then I'm actually going to, uh, after my frustration with my previous, I still haven't got it on my desk, um, my previous little uh, PCB that I made, um, 
which I want to redo, but I'm thinking, well, I need a different project, so I'll make, I might make this into a PCB and see what that one does. But this time I have two separate rows of LEDs with two separate controller inputs um, using the same chips. So that will be fun. Um, let's just turn it on quickly so that you can see that it does work with an actual controller. Um, so it worked yesterday. So all the buttons work, those ones work, those ones work, everything works, and the start works. So you'll have to take my word for it that those are all actually separate buttons. And if you hold them down, it does actually um, do a whole variety of things. So that's how it's supposed to do. How can I get every single button? Oh, I can't get every single light on, can I? because um, you can only go, you can't have both of those. So what I really should do with my, my fake game controller is just go through and find out what happens on games where you actually can, where you actually press left and right both at the same time, which you can't normally do in real life. But the interesting thing is pressing these buttons, sorry, pressing the, the extra three buttons doesn't seem to do anything. So I was wondering if that fact that it's going so fast would make a difference. Maybe if I slowed it down it would um, change things, but Anyway, I'm at least going to solder this up on a on a prototype board thing um, with the 4001 as the oscillator instead of the 555 timer. Um, and I'll show that at a later point and maybe make a PCB. But I did actually start today. Last thing, this is all going to be talking about things, but I playing around with a sort of language to describe circuits that I want to do. It's just for fun, my own sort of style. Uh, so I really want to make my own circuit designer software. <laughs> Uh, and I'm probably going to start doing it at some point, even though I've got other things to do, but it'd be a nice little side project. But I don't really want to, I think I'm going to make it as easy as possible. So I'm only going to focus on the end part, like the actual laying out the PCB. Uh, and I thought for the, um, the, the schematic design, uh, instead of actually having, instead of starting off with actually a way of editing a schematic design I'm going to do it via a language so you can sit there and you can say that you have this resistor and this IC and this and this and this and this and this is and this thing is connected to that and it's all basically in a programming language uh, so you can do some neat little things like if you have repeated components and all that and then then I can have fun doing what I really love in life which is layout algorithms <laughs> and learning about the best way to optimize you know and create auto layout things um, which is really the main point that I want to do it for, but it also be kind of cool to actually make a circuit board uh, with software that you've made yourself, um, and then I'll and then I'll see where that. But it'll be fun to first off make a little language to describe circuits, and then a tool to generate an image of the schematic uh, using the libraries from like Fritzing or whatever, because that seems pretty easy to rip off, um, and <laughs> which is the way you got the way you want to do things, right? Um, though I am actually going to pay money to get the latest version of Fritzing, and I'm hoping all the little annoying bugs that I've had the, the displeasure of ruining my experience with uh, have been removed in the slight um, advancement of version number. And also I get to support them, and then they can make a better product, um, which is good. So anyway, I'm going to put this back together, and thanks for watching. So that works. Everything works. This, this, this is going to be confusing. Maybe this will never actually work out. Um, but I'll look this up tomorrow and see if there's anything fun I can do. Uh, or maybe I'll just actually sit down and stare you know, forever and ever and ever at printouts of these things. I think the trick is, right, you have to get a copy of this and then invert it or something and then put it next to this one so that you're looking down over the top and then you can, you can work out where each component goes because you can't really do it by hand by looking at this and flipping it over and doing that because that doesn't make any sense. But anyway, thanks for watching and bye.